What if I told you that your $30 per hour job might actually be paying you less than $20 per hour? Hmm. Okay, so regardless of how much you make, just take that into consideration. And so in these next few minutes, we're going to dive into a game-changing calculation that most people overlook and that really is going to change the way that you think about your income forever. (laughs) And uh, and so today we're going to show you how to find your real hourly wage. And we're going to show you how to do this in less than 10 minutes. Mm. And the truth is, once you have this number, like it might just give you the freedom to go after that dream that God put on your heart. It might give you the freedom to stay at home with your kids or to Mm. retire way earlier than you thought possible. So stay tuned to find yours. Hey friend, we are Bob and Linda Loddick, authors of Simple Money, Rich Life, and you are listening to the Seed Time Money Podcast, and we are in the middle of a 40-week series where we're sharing our 40-week checklist of all the action steps, strategies, and biblical insights that we use to go from paycheck to paycheck living to reaching our biggest financial goal of giving away a million dollars and living a life of true financial freedom. And so if any of that sounds remotely interesting to you, or if you just want to get out of debt and move forward in your financial life, uh, I think this series is going to help you a lot. Yeah, We've gotten a lot of fantastic feedback so far from a lot of you, so I appreciate you sharing with us and letting us know what you're enjoying so far about this. Mm-hmm. Keep the emails coming, the DMs over on Instagram at Seed Time. Uh, coming. We really appreciate it. And we love just hearing what's resonating, what's working with you. So thanks for listening. Thanks for being here with us today. And so anyway, today I'm excited Mm -hmm. because this is a little bit of a mathy thing, but it's, I I don't like math for math's sake. I'm actually teaching our (laughs) 10 year old a lot of math right now. And and we're homeschooling. And to be honest, like I'm one of those rebellious homeschool teachers where it's like, I understand. I remember asking the question of like, why do I need to know this? Why Why do I even yeah, care about this? Remember when p- teachers told us that we weren't going to be carrying a calculator around in our pocket all the time? <laughs> Boy, they were wrong the about TI-82. that one. The TI-82. Yeah, we have something way better than a TI-82. But anyway, uh, I'm one of those teachers for my son where I'm like, I'm with you, buddy. Like, let's focus on the things that you are going to need. Yeah. And anyway, and so... Uh, and really, I think that a lot of the math up to, I don't know, fourth, fifth grade is stuff that I still use quite often. Sure. And today we're going to use a little bit of math. Long it's not division, a whole lot. though, not as much. <laughs> Long division, I don't do a whole lot I just of, but, round up usually. <laughs> um, which we're, we're pushing him through that. And uh, anyway, he, he's got it. I think he's got it. I but, think um, he's got it. But anyway, so we are uh, today talking about a concept that is incredibly powerful. Mm-hmm. It takes, again, you can do this in probably 10 minutes. And finding this number for yourself, I think it's going to be really empowering. It was for us mm-hmm. at multiple different points right. throughout our journey. Uh, we, we both, you know, run and work in our business now. So it's a little bit different. But uh, but all the years that I had a job, uh, traditional or otherwise, This was incredibly helpful as I'm sitting there making decisions about, all right, should I try to get this, apply for this job within the company or or maybe consider going outside of the company? Or maybe like, should we, one of us stay at home with the kids? Like, would that be better? Mm -hmm. It's like, we'd be giving up a salary, but like no daycare, like, you know. And again, it's information to help you make a better decision, right? That's ultimately what we're, what we're after. Yeah. Wanting to empower you to make the best decision that you can possibly make. Yeah. Cause no one can do that. I mean, you, well, if somebody does try to tell you that, and this is why like, we're not big fans of the one size fits all personal finance rules that so many people, so many experts try to push on everyone because personal finance is personal. Mm -hmm. Like you need to understand and, and you need to prayerfully, you know, kind of find the answers to a lot of these questions for yourself. But our job, I see it, is to help arm you with the information to be able to make those decisions for you and your family. Yep. And that's what we're doing today. And mm-hmm. this is a really, really powerful one. So yes. I'm really excited Very to share it. So uh, this is, so we, Lynn and I actually had a conversation about this that we recorded probably two or three years ago or so. So I'm actually going to drop you into that conversation because we go through all this, break down exactly how to do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm just going to drop you in on that and let you listen to that. And then we'll be back to wish you well as soon as we're done there. <laughs> so without further ado... Here we go. Today, we are talking about a little known calculation that you can do that can save you thousands or tens of thousands of dollars while reducing your stress and helping you enjoy your life more. I mean, I like the sound of this. So 
Everyone thinks they know how much they earn, mm -hmm. like how many dollars per hour they earn, but most people are wrong. And okay. that's kind of what we're talking about here. Uh, because most people just look at, this is how many dollars per hour I get paid. I get paid twenty dollars an hour or whatever. That's my hourly wage. Right. Or if I'm on salary, then if you know I can take the amount of hours I spend in an average week, divide that by my total salary, and then come up with my hourly wage. Mm -hmm. And again, that's wrong for almost all of us. And I'm going to show you why. So with that, let's get into this. And this whole yeah. thing we're talking about here is inspired by this book I read, uh, Your Money or Your Life. I read this many many years ago. It's an old personal finance book. And this exercise came out of there. All right, so now most people think that if I make, say, $2,000 a week and I work 40 hours, and if I take that and divide that, and that equals $50 per hour, okay? That's what most people think. And that makes a little bit of sense. But I'm going to show you why that isn't even close to that simple. It seems like that's the simple calculation that should be, but it's just not the way it works, okay? So when you factor in all of the additional expenses mm. for going to work, you know, so for example, I remember when I had a corporate job, yeah. I had to leave a half an hour or more before right. to drive all the way downtown. And yeah. then I had to drive Usually an hour. half an hour back. Yeah. So it ended up being well over an hour per day extra mm -hmm. that I was working or I had to do that in order to get to my job. Yeah. So that's something that needs to be factored in. And then on top of that, like I had to get up early to get ready. I didn't have a lot of hair that had to be done or makeup, but I still had you. stuff that needed to be done. And right. for a female, like it takes a while to get ready for work. Yeah. Like you have to do some stuff here while we're working at home. But the point is, those are things that need to be factored into the equation. On mm. the other hand, there were clothes that I had to buy. I had to buy dress clothes for this thing that I worked at. Yeah. I had to buy just a lot of different things. And you have to factor all those pieces in the equation. Right. And so I'm going to list off a handful of different things here that I think are worth considering. And the book mentions a lot of these. Some of these are our own. We just kind of came up with. But so another thing they list here is decompression time. So if you have a job that's super stressful and you get yeah. home and you just aren't on your A game as soon as you walk back or walk in the house and like, I need a minute. Like that needs to be factored in the equation because that's, that's extra time that you need to spend doing that. If you have a super stressful job that is causing you to be sick, like in some of these, like you might think, well, that's a stretch and maybe it is, but these are things to factor into this equation when we're trying to figure out our true hourly wage, okay? Right. So if you have a job where all the stress is making you sick or you're having to go to the doctor more because of stress or anything mm. like that, like this has to be factored in the equation, okay? So wear and tear on your car, is something to consider yeah. or like in our case like the alternative that i was considering to my corporate job was me staying at home and running a business from home in that case we could have gotten by with one car so really the expense of a car was tied to that job that i had yeah you know now certainly there's other jobs where um you know you would still need a car right. so it all depends on what you're kind of comparing it to but mm -hmm. And where you it's live just something and all types of factors. To be considered, for right. sure. All right, another one is what I call deserve it expenses. Oh, boy. So, <laughs> so stuff where, man, my job is so hard. I hate my boss. I came home. It's like I deserve to X, Y, Z wow. or whatever. Whereas if you're doing a different job, you might not need to have to have that, not to do that. You know what right. I mean? Right. Like I deserve to not make dinner tonight. I deserve to not make dinner. I deserve right. to go get this massage, blah, blah, blah go out in the bar and have a whole bunch of drinks, whatever the thing is. <laughs> um, but the dinner thing brings up another well, thing. But you might actually need a massage. No, yeah. Right. But again, depending yeah. on the work that you're doing, right. like you might not. Mm -hmm. And that's why that has to be factored into the equation. Um, in terms of food, like again, my position that I worked at, like sometimes there's a little bit of pressure to go out to lunch, which causes you to spend money or more money, you know? Mm -hmm. And so that has to be factored in the equation. Because if I were working at home, I probably wouldn't have gone out to lunch in that situation. Mm. So as you're seeing, like there's a lot of things that people don't consider to be expenses that are tied to their job. And right. this is how you determine your real hourly wage. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you a few more things to consider here. So are there other things that you are paying other people to do because you just don't have time? Because maybe you're working 60 or 70 hours a week that if you did have a normal 40 hours a week job right. or if you were working from home, uh, that you wouldn't have to pay someone to do. Right. So like that's a factor. Mm -hmm. Another really big one, 
uh, for a lot of women considering being a stay-at-home mom is like childcare. Yeah. You know, because this is such a big deal because once you, this is why this is so important because once you determine your real hourly wage, it's like suddenly childcare, maybe it doesn't even make any sense right. to have a job. Because like you factor in the expense of well, childcare, and it's like, wait a minute. Especially if you're wanting to stay home with your kids and you're like, are they paying me enough money to keep me away from my kids? Like, yeah, because if mean, you that's... look at what's on paper, maybe you're making $20 an hour, but after you do this exercise, maybe it's less than five. what you're paying. Right. You know, or, and so yeah, I'm going to get you an example in five. just a minute and show my exact situation and what was going on with me. Mm. Um, and then, you know, just kind of show you exactly how to do this whole thing. But anyway, the point is, is as you're going through all these costs, uh, you can be thinking about these and writing down estimates on them because a lot of them you're going to have to estimate. Like they aren't going to necessarily be black and white numbers. And you want to be realistic with this. Like if you get mm -hmm. too far into, I hate my job, I hate my boss, I have to do everything because of them. Like, you know, you want to be realistic so, with it to yeah, make a good solid calculation. Yeah, you have to take the emotion out yeah, of Yeah, you got to remove a little bit of that. But Know anyway, yourself well. So let me pull the iPad back up and just kind of go through an example from my life and my situation. Okay. All right. So yeah, I'm going to take over writing. Your handwriting is a little... Great. Okay. <laughs> All right. So my last job, okay. um, this would have been 15 years ago or something, right mm -hmm. before I got laid off, I was making $36,000 a year, working 40 hours a week. Yeah, that comes out to about $3,000 a month. Okay. Um, and 160 hours each month. Okay. So we do that, we divide that, and then we get eighteen seventy-five per hour. That was my hourly rate eighteen okay. seventy five per hour okay so doing this exercise what i did is starting going through all these different things added up my drive time so it was about one hour conservatively we'll say one hour per day drive time which comes out to 20 hours per month okay okay so we're going to take this did we write down 160 did you write down 160 or write down 160 160 what hours 160 oh okay so that's how much I was working every month, 160 hours. And so we're going to add to that all these additional hours. So okay, the 20 plus. hours per month of drive time, we're mm -hmm. going to add to that. And then we're going to add, it was about, I don't know, 10 hours a month, 30 minutes a day for getting ready for work. Okay. So each day, about 30 minutes a day, it comes out to 10 hours per month. 30 minutes, like each day I had a lunch break where I wasn't paid, but I really couldn't go anywhere. So it's kind of like trapped. You know what I mean? Because okay. it's like I'm, 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 you know, not working, but I'm also stuck there. So it's like right. time I have to be there. So it's thirty minutes a day. So again, that's ten hours per month. Okay. That I think we should add to this equation. All right. For me, I think it was probably about thirty minutes uh, a day of decompression time, especially when the job was really challenging. When I got home, right. where I feel like I'm not myself. I need yeah. to breathe for a little bit to kind of get back. So again, that's another 10 hours per month. Okay. Okay. So we add all of those up to that 160, and that gives us 210 hours per month okay. that essentially my job was costing me of my time. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. We get all there. So we got 160 plus 20 plus 10 plus 10, 210 hours per month is about where we landed. Okay. All right. So let's Jeez. go break out another page now. Okay. And then we're going to look at some of the additional expenses that I incurred in my particular situation. Okay. When I looked at all the money I had to spend on clothes that I really didn't wear anywhere else other than work, it would end up being about $100 a month. Yeah. In some cases, maybe more. So it was $100 a month on clothes because I had to do that. I would say $200 a month probably yeah. eating out because I was just too worn out to cook. I tend to be the cook in our house. Yeah. And so there's just those nights where it's like, I just got beat up at work all day. I yeah. don't feel like going to the kitchen and cooking. And so we're going to go out. Yeah. And there, it's just different, you know. And again, for me and my situation, I'm comparing this past thing to the work from home opportunity that I have now and running right. my business from home. And I don't have that too often. I cook a whole lot and I enjoy yeah. it, you know. But the point is, is that that was an extra expense I had. So $200 a month on that. Okay. $200 a month on gas, mm. driving to and from work, back and forth, mm -hmm. that my employer didn't pay me for. Yeah. And I would say probably $200 a month on wear and tear on the car. I think that's a fair kind of wow. depreciation yeah. expense that, you know, just the cost of needing a car yeah. to do that. And then, like, if we add it up, 
just a fact in our situation that like we could have maybe even gotten by with one car and then we just right. get rid of that entire car, lose the car payment and all the stuff. Like that was another $300 a month. Um, so anyway, and so there's a whole bunch of other things we were talking about that like mm -hmm. I could probably add to this equation, but we'll just start here. And so you add all those up, you get $1,000 per month of extra expenses that it was costing me to do that, okay? Now, we take the $3,000 a month that I was earning, and we now need to subtract out this $1,000 a month, okay? And so that gets us to an actual earnings of about $2,000 a month, okay? And then, so we're making about $2,000 a month, and then our hours, uh, they say it's only 160, but it's actually 210. So we divide right. that, those uh, $2,000 we're making, by this 210 hours per month, and that gets us a real hourly wage of $9.50 per wow. hour. So even though I thought I was making $18 per hour, the reality is when you add all this stuff up, it was only about $9.50 an oh, hour. Oh, gosh. So, and this doesn't even take into account like taxes. Like we're not even going there yet. You know what I mean? Oh. Like this isn't take home pay. This is Oof. still like top line numbers. Right. And so, yeah, and there was another example. Uh, I don't know if I ever told you the one girl who drove in our office. I think she drove an hour and 15 oh, minutes to gosh. work every day. Yeah, so, I had someone that drove like that to my work too. And and I'm like, I can't Man, imagine she was making much either. We're, we're working for you know, pretty low paying jobs yeah. at that point and the amount of miles she was putting on her car. And, and when gas was spiking. The time, and, like, oh gosh. It's like, I, I, I can't even imagine running these numbers for a situation right. like hers. And so uh, the point is like how to use this information. Like what I want to talk about now is this is information to help you make a better decision for you and your family. Okay. Right. Because in my case, $18 an hour means one thing to me. But once I find out that it's actually a nine fifty an hour, man, there might be a $12 an hour job right next door to me that is less stressful. Yeah. That actually is closer. The yeah. real hourly wage is closer to $12 an hour right. that would beat this out. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so that's really powerful. And it's like, you know, maybe driving for Uber makes more sense for you, you know, right. than doing this thing. Like it's just information to help you make a better financial decision. And that's why this is so important. It's interesting because it's really like people don't think like this. Right now. Not very many. Like, I, I mean, I remember there were several places close to us that maybe you could have gotten a job, but it would have looked like a step down. Yeah. Like, oh, he did, he can't get a real job, so he's got to go, you know, yep. do this. But actually, like, would it have simplified our life a whole lot more? Probably. Yeah. No, yeah. I mean, yeah. So I worked at a financial services firm, and I got to dress up every day. And right. from the outside looking in, it looked like I was special. But it the was... reality is, is... I was stuck in the middle of cubicle land doing, pushing papers and... Um, and you were miserable. No, and hated it. And meanwhile, at the same time, like based on this exercise, I probably could have went and waited tables at a nice restaurant. Right. And done way better. Right. You know? So anyway... And it's just, not hated your life. <laughs> yeah. And just had more freedom and everything else. But so with all that, I want to throw out just a few other factors to consider with this whole thing that... Uh, or some are counterpoints to this because mm -hmm. again, like this isn't, there's nothing in personal finance that is one size fits all. And so mm -hmm. you need to be able to evaluate these decisions all the way around. And I want to give you all the perspectives here. So one of the counterpoints to this in terms of like, should I go drive for Uber or should I work at this corporate job? Right. Is you need to think about the long-term potential of it, right? Mm -hmm. You need to think about the career path. Right. Okay. So Uber, you're probably not going anywhere beyond that, <laughs> you know, like, there's not a, a career You're path not for advancement. climbing the corporate ladder. Um, you know, and in my case, there was some opportunity, and I was a little bit pigeonholed in my personal situation. But at my company, there was a lot of opportunity for growth. Right. And a lot of opportunity that if I would have stuck there, I probably would have advanced into higher level paying jobs and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And so that's a factor to consider, mm -hmm. you know, in the whole thing. Uh, another thing is that it's not just about the money, right? Yeah. Like, this isn't just about that. Like, I think that's something to uh, always consider with your job. Yeah. You know, it's not just about what they're paying you. Um, you know, and something else, like the drive to work, like I actually miss the drive to work. 
right? I know. Yeah. Like, they do. I, like I enjoyed having that time, that quiet time to and from work. And part of that, honestly, was part of my decompression time. Right. Um, my time to listen to audiobooks or podcasts or whatever. Uh, you know, and I know for you, like you really miss working with people, like in an office yeah, environment. Yeah, totally. And it's like, we love working at home, but I yeah. know that you miss that camaraderie of absolutely having a bunch of people. So like, that's just another factor where it's not just about the math problem that right. we just showed you, but these are different lenses to kind of think through this decision for yourself, you mm -hmm. know, whatever that looks like. Yeah. And then the most important thing, of course, is to follow God and like where he's absolutely. leading you in this whole thing. Uh, because... Like, I know when I first did this calculation, I felt like I was supposed to stay in that job. I'm like, I don't <laughs> want to stay in this job. But I felt like God had me there for a purpose and a reason. And I'm like, all right, I'm supposed to stay here. And so in that case, it doesn't, the numbers don't matter, you yeah. know? So you like, you have to obviously keep that into the equation. But anyway, the goal of this whole thing is to kind of help you figure out what this number is for your, yourself. Mm -hmm. and so that's your homework right now. Um, to do this equation for yourself, um, go line by line through all these different things. Yeah. And like I said, you can do this in 10 minutes. It's not going to take that long. It's a simple problem to figure out. Right. Yeah. I mean, this, to me, this is like pretty wild to like think through this process Yeah. because it feels like the safe thing to do is just probably stay where you are. But for a lot of people, this is a really good exercise to just get information yep. and then take it to the Lord. Yep. You know? Get it done. And add the perks of like if you get a free, if, you, if your work has a gym. Mm -hmm. Yep. yep. Like, no, do both sides of the equation. For like, sure. Like that's a great point. Yeah. Um, because it's easy to just tear down your job and well, all the things are not doing And for I feel you. like for you too, like you you really loved getting out of that job. And so <laughs> yes. Yes. It's it, You're making it sound a little bit like, you know. Everything's awful. But like a lot of people have great health insurance. Like that's also yeah. something huge to consider. Yep. Yep. I completely agree. Like I, I very much framed this through me wanting to get See? out of it. But yes, that's a great point. Like yeah. pay attention to those other perks that you have. Um, but you like know, the add, 401k matching and all that stuff. Add yeah. the numbers in it. Right. Yep. Like yep. it's like that all matters. Yeah. No, because you can do that with a lot of those different things. Like you can get an estimate of what... The health insurance would cost you if you weren't doing there. You right. can get an estimate for what the 401k match is and all that stuff. Yeah. So those are easy numbers to kind of add to the equation. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I hope you mm -hmm. found that helpful. I hope uh -huh. you found this as valuable as we did. Uh, and again, multiple points in our lives. Like I did this exercise and it was so enlightening. Mm -hmm. uh, and in some ways it, it can be discouraging, you know, like we addressed a little bit. But uh but my hope is that this would be empowering to you mm -hmm. and help you to see some other options. And, and so for now, your homework, I want you to actually do this, okay? Yeah. I want you to go figure this out for yourself, follow the steps that we laid out, and then email us or DM us at Seed Time on Instagram. Let us know how it went for you. Mm -hmm. I want to know what you learned in this process. I want to learn, uh, like, if you are one of those people who's like, yeah, I get paid, you know, my paycheck says $30 an hour, but after I break all this down, it's actually only 18 uh, right. You know, let us know. Or if you have the opposite, you know, when you actually look at all the benefits that come with your job mm -hmm. and you look at the fact that they're contributing to your 401k or they have free health insurance or whatever thing might be, right. like you might find the opposite where it's like, man, right. I'm actually earning a lot more than I thought, you know? Yeah. So regardless again, of what that that's is. that's really good information to have, like yeah. to, to view it the proper way so that you can make decisions, you know. Yeah. And obviously this isn't the only factor in your decision making, but yeah. it's just, it's good to know. Yeah, but it's one that could be really important. Right. So anyway, so that's your homework for today. Uh, if you found this helpful, share it with somebody. Mm -hmm. we, it helps us a ton and we really appreciate it. But you're awesome. We really value you, appreciate you. So excited we got to hang out with you today. Yeah. And have a great one and we'll see you next time. I'm only on page 13 and I've already underlined a zillion things and I want to cry in a good way. This is what Kelly said after reading our book, Simple Money, Rich Life. Yeah. Well, those first 13 pages, I mean, they are they're going to do it to you. They're going to do it to you. So be sure to check out the first 13 pages. And did you know that you can get a copy of this award-winning book for free? You can get it on Amazon, but we so believe that the church needs this message that if you can cover shipping, we'd love to cover the cost of the book and send you a free copy. All you need to do is go to seedtime.com slash free to get yours.